Hey, it's Jeremy from Jeremy.net. So I'm working on a page from Morningstar issue six. And this book's already been published. It's out there. So if you've read it already, then you kind of know what this scene signifies. But I've got a, a group shot here. And this particular figure that I'm drawing is a really good example of drawing through the figure. And for those of you who haven't heard that expression before, the point of drawing through the figure is to really try to look at the figure as though you're looking at it with x-ray eyes. Like you're seeing it as though the whole thing is made out of glass. Like you can look, like it's a transparent figure that you can look through. And the idea of this is that you can help make your figures feel more solid, more in perspective, and just overall just a, a little bit more believable by really understanding all sides of the form, by really trying to draw it so it, it looks and feels like a, a three-dimensional object, by conceptualizing what you know that, that three-dimensional view is, looking through it. Now, notice that after I draw in the basic shape of the limbs, the directions of them, I'm still adding on the clothing on top, I'm drawing the, the wings on top, and then the feathers. Now, having that drawn on top of it, there's a lot of stuff that I drew in the, the basic understructure that is going to end up being covered up. Those wings that, that sort of act as a cape, they cover up a lot of the back. But it really helps me by drawing the understructure first. It helps me figure out what parts of the figure really should be visible underneath those those wing capes of theirs. And it just... I think that it overall helps improve my drawing. And it's something that I have to remind myself to do all the time. It's something that should be second nature by now. But sometimes when you're balancing a complex page, you're trying to draw quickly, you've got a lot of things running through your mind. You know, you're thinking about the actual silhouette of the figure. And you're thinking about it as a two-dimensional shape. You're thinking about the actual story and the sense of energy and flow that's going through it. You're thinking about the composition of multiple figures. Like I have going on here... I've got this crazy, it's not crazy perspective, but the fact that I've got this perspective where you're looking down this street as all these characters are walking together in the same direction. You've got the buildings there. And you'll see when I go through, because I have a chance to start inking a bit of this page in this video. You'll see when I get into the inking that like all these characters are walking down there. And there's a lot going on in this panel, even though it's a really simple. It's just you're watching a bunch of characters walking away from you. But... In doing that, and trying to balance all of these things, sometimes you don't necessarily pay attention to a lot of the little different details. And I think that's one of the advantages of doing artwork over a number of years, is that a lot of the things that you have to force yourself to remember early on, you eventually, hopefully, start developing a kind of mental muscle memory. One quick thing I wanted to mention, since I'm just getting into the inks right here, is that when I usually start inking a comic page, I really do prefer to do all of my straight edge and, and ruled work first. And the reason why is because I'm a little bit more careful when I'm drawing these straight edge lines to not smear anything because I'm you know running that triangle across the surface of the page. Sometimes I'm placing it over elements. I try not to place the straight edge over parts that I've inked first. But sometimes it's just mentally easier for me to remember where I am or what sections I'm doing. If I sort of pick an area, like I start doing all of my, my vertical lines and just slowly moving across from one set of vertical lines down to the next set of vertical lines and the next set of vertical lines, and then going and doing the lines that are horizontal or coming out in perspective. So by doing them in a sequence like that, so I'm less likely to lose my place, it does mean that I'm putting my, my triangle over areas that I've inked before. So having to use a little bit more caution and be careful early on, I'd rather get that focus out of the way. That way, when I come in and start doing the figure work with the brushes, then I can really focus more on those, those more storytelling aspects that I mentioned before, you know, kind of the, the direction of energy in both the figure and the action that's happening in the panel. And those, those two-dimensional aspects like, like the strong silhouette. Now, these structural elements, you know, the, 
these buildings have a silhouette, even though they're, they're cubes, they're objects in space, and the background, the mountains, all those things have silhouettes to them. So they themselves play a part in that two-dimensional storytelling. But going back and forth between the two-dimensional and the three-dimensional, that's kind of the whole point of this, this process, is that you're trying to depict, depict these drawings on the page, creating the illusion of a three-dimensional world with you know, a two-dimensional surface. That idea that I had mentioned earlier about developing a kind of me mental muscle memory, that's something that I think I'm going to try to remember to come back to in the future and discuss. Because it's something that continues to plague me. There's a lot of different skills that I've developed over my years of making comic books and drawing and making artwork, but not nearly enough of them are instinctual as I would like. And the big reason for that is the actual number of hours in the day I put in drawing. You know, I usually only get in about, you know, one to three hours a day drawing if I'm lucky. Most often not. A lot of days I'm only able to draw for about one hour a day, at least doing my personal work. Sometimes I can get in, you know, two or three hours around my day job, coming home in the evening, you know, whatever time I can fit in. And I think that having a number of hours you put in, it's not like you're putting the hours in mindlessly, but when you're actively practicing skills that you're trying to improve at, that's what makes a difference. And I don't get enough hours in the day where I say, oh wait, I need to work on drawing through the figure. I need to remember to do it with every single one. I need to make sure everything has a strong silhouette. There's all these different skill sets that I'm trying to build upon. And I've had times in the past where I was doing them a lot. Then I have times when I'm only drawing a little bit and they sort of fade away. Much like with figure drawing, I say the more you do it, the stronger you get, the less you do it, the weaker you get. Thanks for watching. If you enjoy these videos, please like and share them. Don't forget to click the subscribe button. You can sign up for my weekly newsletter to get a free digital comic at newsletter.jeremy.net. That's newsletter.gerimi.net. Also, visit my main website, jeremy.net, where you can buy my comic books, art prints, and more. There's also links to my Instagram, Twitter, and other social media accounts. That's it for now. Go be creative.